And welcome to the fifth annual anniversary for the New American Academy. My name is Ali Yusuf, and I will be your host tonight. And I will welcome you all to this great event, and it will be a very thought provoking night. As you already know, and what history teaches us, that you have to know where you come from in order to reflect where you're going. So New American Academy Roots was planted some five years ago to serve the New American community. This organization stands for forefront of a leadership thinking and practice. We believe that people are the key to change that the complexities of sustainable development can only be tackled by investing our community in our youth and our leaders to preserve and protect the future of this planet. Five years later, New American Academy continues to address the needs of many families around the state of Minnesota by providing serious, innovative, and life-changing programs including community engagement, youth leadership, and advocacy. And I do believe that everyone who is here today have an opportunity to make a practical change in our society. No, never doubt, a small and committed people always can make a difference in this world. And this reminds me what the, president, the Tanzanian president said. He said, it can be done, do your part. So any one of us who are here today can do a small steps to make a great impact. And that's what matters. So ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you here tonight to our fifth anniversary. Therefore, we have a great lineup of speakers, great community leaders, business people, people from all walks of life. And today, for the next hour or so, 
we will have a very serious programs and speakers that will present how nonprofit organizations and a public sector organization have day-to-day -day impact in our communities. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker is Andy Luger. Andy Luger is the United States Attorney for the District of Minnesota. He was formally nominated in November 21st, 2003, and unanimously confirmed by the United States Senate on February 12, 2014. And he was sworn in two days later in February 14, 2014. U.S. Attorney Luger served as an assistant United States attorney in Eastern District of New York from 1989 to 1992. And from 1992 to 1995, he, in the District of Minnesota, where he prosecuted a wide variety of narcotics and violent crimes, as well as complex and white-collar fraud cases. And in 1995, Mr. Luger joined Green Aspel in Minneapolis, where he was a partner up until 2014. During his last year, he practiced in a private practice. Mr. Luger was sought after by a public officials to conduct investigation into various matters of a public importance. In, 2004, in 2008, at the request of St. Paul Mayor Chris Coleman, Mr. Luger co-chair a review of the law enforcement security operation during 2008 Republican National Convention in St. Paul. In 2009, Mr. Luger was appointed by the Commissioner of Minnesota Department of Public Safety to lead the investigation of Metro Gang Strike Force, which uncovered a series of problems with the unit. On his recommendation, the Metro Gang Strike Force was per permanently disbanded and it was subsequently abolished. In 2012, Mr. Lugo was asked by the Minneapolis Mayor, R.T. Rayback, to lead a review of the city's youth violence pre prevention program. Short after his swearing in as the United States Attorney, Mr. Luger said his priorities for the office, which include prosecuting heroin and other drug trafficking, human trafficking, gang violence, identity theft, and white collar fraud, and of course, terrorism. Mr. Luger graduated from the Amherst College and a bachelor's degree in a highest honor in 1981. And he had a JD or Juris Doctor in 2000 in 1985 from Georgetown University. Please help me welcome our U.S. Attorney, Andy Luger. That's quite an introduction, thank you very much. <clears throat> so I'm gonna tell you a secret about, about the introduction and what was just said about me. And, as long as you promise not to tell anybody. Uh, everybody always introduces me and says that I was confirmed unanimously by the United States Senate in February, and that's true. But the rest of the story is that there were two people in the United States Senate at the time. Uh, Washington was having what they consider to be a blizzard, what we consider to be nothing. Uh, and Al Franken and Amy Klobuchar were the only people there. And <laughs> Amy said, I nominate Luger, and Franken said, good idea, and I got unanimously confirmed. <laughs> if, if you see Amy Klobuchar, thank her for me whenever you can. Uh, I've been United States Attorney now for about 11 months. And shortly after taking office, uh, I had the good fortune of sitting down to dinner uh, with about 20 Somali imams. Uh, I wanted to start to get to know this wonderful community. And uh, if, because I care so much about religious leaders and, and the status that they have in all communities, I, I asked some imams to put together a meeting. 
and we sat down over dinner and we talked about who we were and what we believed in and I asked them a very open-ended question. What can I do for you? And I've been asking that question ever since. And the answer that I got that night last, last year started with, of all of the problems that the community faces, civil rights issues, issues at the airport, unemployment, violence, the number one priority that I heard that night and for nights thereafter was we applied for a permit to have a mosque, to have a prayer space in a building in St. Anthony two years ago and it was denied and we made a civil rights complaint and we don't know where that is. And so I promised, and sometimes I'm a little quick with my promises, but I promised to look into it. You know, and they, of course, people are skeptical because, you know, when somebody like me says, I'll look into it, they often think, okay, well, that's the end of that. The next morning, I called together the lawyers in my office who had worked on that complaint and who had worked to investigate the allegation that there was a civil rights violation. And I pulled them together and I said, tell me where you are. And they looked at me and they said there was a civil rights violation. And we believe that we should sue the city of St. Anthony and get this reversed. And then I learned of all the steps you have to take as United States Attorney, see I, I got this title, I thought I could do whatever I wanted. All the steps that you have to take to actually sue a city for a civil rights violation. So it took weeks, but we did it. And we decided that not only would we sue the city of St. Anthony, but we would hold a press conference so that everybody in Minnesota would know, one, that there had been a civil rights violation. Two, that the United States government was standing up for this community and for the civil rights of this community. And three, that we weren't gonna back down until the decision was changed. So we did. <laughs> and lo and behold, in December, we all got together, the city council and the mayor from St. Anthony, the imams from Abu Herrera, and my team, and after 10 hours in separate conference rooms in the courthouse with the United States judge going back and forth, he didn't come to us very much because there wasn't much to say. Usually we're, you know, you're negotiating, and I said we got nothing to negotiate about. We will stay here until they change their decision, and that's it. We're not moving. So one of my proudest moments at the end of that long, hard day into the night was when the mayor of the city of St. Anthony, who had been my mortal enemy since I stood up at the press conference, turned to Sheikh Omar and said, welcome to the city of St. Anthony. And he turned to me and he said, we've got to fix this and we've got to move forward together. And I'd like for the imams and you and I to stand up together and announce this settlement because they changed the decision of the city council and they are allowing the prayer space in the building as they should have done two years ago. And so we stood out on a freezing cold day. It was really freezing cold. Uh, you know, the guy who tells me what to do in front of the press believed we should do it out front of the building. I thought he was crazy. Uh, but it made for a quick press conference, I'll tell you that. We stood outside together and the mayor of St. Anthony repeated what he had said privately, and then he shook Sheikh Omar's hand, and a new day has begun for this community in St. Anthony, and I believe everybody is gonna go together and prosper, and the prayer services will be filled, and the community will embrace Abu Herrera in St. Anthony.
I tell you that because it means so much to me, and I want you to know how much the work that we have done together matters to me. We have a long way to go. People are being stopped at the airport unnecessarily and questioned unnecessarily. I want you to understand that we have some of the top people at Customs and TSA in Washington, in Chicago, and here who are working on fixing that problem. It's going to take time. But we in Minneapolis and St. Paul and our airport will be at the forefront of fixing what is a national problem. And we're not going to stop until it's fixed. They gave me 10 minutes, so I'm going to, sh I'm going to keep, it, keep it to 10 minutes. Uh, people talk to me all the time about terrorism, and let me tell you what I tell them. No one cares more about the recruitment and the radicalization that is going on than you do. It harms our community as a whole, but it really goes to the heart and soul of the Somali community. And no one wants it stopped more than you do. And so we're committed to working together to stop the recruiting so that your young men and women can live in peace, can thrive as prosperous members of the greater Minnesota community. That's my commitment. That's the work that we're doing together. And we won't stop until we get there, right? And finally, I, I will tell you that no matter who you are, and whenever you try to do something good that you believe in, uh, each of us has had this experience, so I'll tell you. There are people who oppose the work that we're doing. They don't like it. And they're either jealous of the good work, or they have their own ideological beliefs that there's some, there must be something wrong with us, that somehow, because I'm engaged with this community, and because I'm the chief prosecutor for the state of Minnesota, I must be using this whole process as part of a plan to spy on the Somali community. And they've conjured up this concept. And I, I, I say this because it is so ridiculous that when the first person raised it with me and said, well, Mr. Luger, it was a reporter who had been fed this line, and they said to me, Mr. Luger, aren't you really just increasing your surveillance? Isn't all of this work you're doing, this community engagement, a phony attempt to spy on the community? Honest, I said to the reporter, until you just said that to me, the concept had not even crossed my mind. How is it that us together, with all with great organizations like this, working to increase after-school programs, to increase educational opportunities, to increase mentorship for the young men and women in the community, how could any of that be bad? And how could any of that have anything to do with spying? And the answer is it doesn't. So you'll hear this message coming from some people. I don't know why, and I can't figure it out. But I didn't sue the city of St. Anthony to spy on the Somali community. <laughs> I'm not meeting with the large corporations in the Twin Cities to get them to support after-school funding and scholarships and mentorship programs to spy on your community. And I promise you, I promise you, these false messages that you're hearing are not true. You, you know who I am. If you don't, ask somebody who does. I believe deeply in all of the work that you're doing and that we're doing together. And regardless of what somebody might say, we're not going to stop until we reach our goals. Thanks for having me tonight. Thank you so much, uh, our U.S. Attorney, uh, Mr. Luger. 
And now I would like to call Ahmed Jama. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, I wasn't prepared to speak tonight, but my friend Asset asked me to uh, say a few words about this organization and what it stands for. When the Somali community in Eden Prairie were facing a lot of challenges when we first got there in the 1980s and later. And this organization and many others came out as a necessity for survival. Our kids were facing educational challenges because of language difficulties, because of uh, cultural difficulties. So New American Academy and other Somali organizations came out of that necessity uh, to help our community survive in the first ring or the second ring of suburbia. I stood here tonight to tell you that we came a long way. Uh, imagine coming here from a centralized uh, system. You don't know the language, you don't know the culture, you don't know how to navigate through this complicated system. Uh, our kids were just imagine being, uh, uh, we were like at the bottom, because in Eden Prairie, it's one of the best schools in the, in the nation. Number one, the high school is number one in the ACT score in the nation. Imagine putting a refugee kid in that class who is not prepared, who don't have an academic background, who probably just came from a refugee camp with no schooling background, we were facing a lot of challenges. And thanks to New American Academy, uh, Kedjog, other Somali uh, organizations, uh, we, we uh, pulled our straps and we moved on. Also, I stood up here tonight. My office in, is in St. Anthony, that building you are fighting for. And on behalf of the Somali community, I'd like to present Andrew M. Luger an award for his courageous stand for justice. Uh, Mr. Luger, the Somali people respect you highly for your courageous, for your fairness, and thank you for all you did for us. So to proceed, we have uh, another speaker that is well reserved uh, and have tremendous amount of skills and experience working with community of different colors and different backgrounds. And tonight, I would like to welcome Wogi War. She is the president of a youth. Price Foundation. Please help me welcome Weggy. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Directors of Youth Prize, the staff, and on my own behalf, it's a great pleasure to be here tonight to stand with the new American Academy to tell them you've done a great job, to celebrate with them. and to learn from them. I feel like in the short time I've been here, I've learned a lot. I've learned, for example, that sometimes it um, makes sense to get your business done when there's a big storm in a different city, right? You can accomplish great things if you do that. Youth Prize is a learning beyond the classroom intermediary established by the McKnight Foundation to champion learning beyond the classroom. We fulfill our mission by strategically combining funding, public policy advocacy, research and evaluation, and authentic youth engagement all under one roof. And that makes us very nimble and very flexible and frees us 
to make deep investments in organizations that we believe in. And this organization is one of the organizations that we believe in. And I want to just take a few minutes to say why. And I might do it in a little bit of a roundabout way. So the, the first turn is I am a co-chair of an organization called the Mission Impact Council. And what we're trying to do within the work of the Mission Impact Council is to really study what does it mean to be socially responsible in the urban core. What does that look like? And to answer that question, we have decided to take these deep immersions into different communities and learn from the community what are your hopes, what are your aspirations. If we were to support you, what should that support look like? So we've done three of six of these deep kind of conversations with different communities. And I think one of the most impressionable was the conversation with the Somali community, where we sat at the table and talked about the aspirations for, for their community and what were their hopes. And I think I left that conversation understanding what a strength it is that we have such a robust Somali population and how that positions the state of, of Minnesota to become a true global powerhouse in the future. What a privilege it will be to shift the way we think about what we can use with the talent, what we can do with the talent that they bring to this community. And how wonderful would it be to advance this vision of a Minnesota that supports all of its citizens. One of the things that I love about this organization is their understanding of the complexity of what it means to be a new immigrant in the United States of America. And I think if I'm interpreting the work correctly, they are really advancing three core ideas. The first idea is a new vision of young people. And within the programs that's aimed at building the leadership capacity of young people, they really are asking them to explore this deep question of what is your role in the community? And how does that connect to your culture and how can you translate that into action? So what this organization is doing in a big way is trying to transform the understanding of who a young person is by supporting them to achieve their dreams. And that's a critical, critical piece for a young person to know I have a sense of self, I have a dream, I have high hopes, and I know that I'm surrounded by people that can help me to realize those hopes. So a new vision of young people through their programming and through a very holistic youth development approach where there's an understanding of the importance of health and the importance of community. The second area that I think Assad and his team and the board's trying to advance is this notion of a new vision of learning. Okay, that's the academy. And this vision really is thinking about learning that is deep and learning that is purposeful and learning that is combining informal learning from the community and family formal learning from the education system and non-formal learning that can occur outside of the classroom. And it's understanding that for a young person to truly thrive, you need all three of the systems. So this new vision of learning is hands-on, it's exper experiential, it's forward-thinking, it's building the capacity 
of young people to prepare for a society that is in constant, constant motion. And New American Academy gets that. And then the third core area of the work is this new vision of community, really forcing us to think what does a good, healthy, functional community look like? And it's really related to transforming the way that you prepare young people to participate in the community that they serve. So really looking at social entrepreneurship, encouraging young people to prepare for a future that we don't know what it's gonna look like, is not only about going to college and getting a degree, but it's also how do you create your own jobs? You know, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So on behalf of Youth Prize and of all the young people from the state of Minnesota, we say thank you for your great work and congratulations on this special occasion. Thank you so much, Wiki, for your great and delighting presentation, and I really congratulate your work with the community. Moving forward, I uh, would like to move on to our next speaker. But before I get to that speaker, I would like to share with you a very brief story about the community. Hannibin County is one of the largest counties in the state of Minnesota in terms of population. People that live in, or inhabitants that live in the state of Minnesota, majority of them reside in the state of, in the county of Hennepin. And Hennepin is very important to the Somali and the new American community because county provides a lot of services, whether it's a human services, whether uh, policing, and other community services. So our next speaker is Hannibin County District Commissioner and the Chair of the Board of Commissioners. I'm not going forward with that introduction. I would like to welcome Jean Collison, please help me welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Such a pleasure to be here this evening. I want to thank um, everyone for the invitation. I'm honored to have the chance to speak, and I'm honored to represent Hennepin County here tonight. Five years is a long time in the nonprofit world. That's a lot of asking for funds. That's probably a lot of sleepless nights when you hope things are going to work out. It's a lot of trying new things. And at the end, if you're still around after five years, that's a lot of success. And when there's success, it's because there's strong leadership. And that's what we see here tonight at New American Academy. There are strong roots. And that's what you all are. It's clear the connections that they, that they have made, and those are really important. And there's a strong vision. And what I want to say tonight is that Hennepin County shares the vision that you have for your community. As we work to feed people, to house people, to make sure their medical needs are met, to get them ready for employment, we have the same goal of healthy, strong individuals families and neighborhoods where everybody has a chance to succeed and we can't do it by ourselves. We need our community partners. We need you to tell us what's going on in your community as you've done, done tonight. We need your guidance. We need your work on issues like Southwest Light Rail Transit so people can get around. We need your support on issues like housing. You are incredibly important to us here. And so it's really been our pleasure at Hennepin County to partner with you and to congratulate you this evening and to look forward to all the great work you're going to do in the next five years. And I'm really pleased to have joined you tonight. Thank you. So I would like to welcome Robert Maka. Please help me welcome Robert. Thank you. Good afternoon again. <laughs> uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here 
to uh, celebrate the fifth year of New American Academy. I come to know uh, New American Academy in 2011 um, when I met um, Assad through uh, an initiative called the Corridors of Opportunity. And it was really to try to support some of the community engagement work that was happening in Eden Prairie. And when Assad told me that there was a large number of Somali uh, members in Eden Prairie, he had to tell me three times before I was convinced I never would have thought it to be. Um, <clears throat> but, but, but let me just say, um, when I first met uh, Assad, New American Academy was a small organization providing tutoring and after school support and gathering space for elders in the community. Um, an organization that too often operated under the radar, operated under the radar, um, and, um, and wasn't known by the broader community. Today, I want to just touch three areas really, really quickly. One, at the regional level, New American Academy took three small grants and leveraged those grants over three years and created what is now recognized as a regional organization. With leadership that's connected to a network of leaders that are advancing equity across the region and has positioned itself as a member and a voice at decision-making tables at the government level and at transitway levels in ways that five years ago never would have happened. On a local level, New American Academy is now recognized as a capable institution in the community and still, um, in addition to looking uh, to support kids, it's looking at housing and economic development and entrepreneurship and still paying attention to what's happening to the young people and the elders in that community. On a personal level, I watched um, Assad and, and the staff at New American Academy work hard to build the internal capacity of the organization, to put the skills at work that was needed to lift it up and hold it in place, um, and to never, ever do it without the guidance and the wisdom of the elders of that community, and to never, ever do it losing sight of the possibilities of the young people that live in that community. <laughs> and much progress has been made over these five years, but what we know is that even though a strong foundation has been laid, there's much work to be done. And as we go forward, Nexus Community Partners is completely committed to supporting the work of New American Academy in, in any way that we can. Um, I have come to uh, know Assad as a good friend. Um, we spend a great deal of time together, um, and I look forward to doing that as we go forward. I would like to welcome Mahalo Timali. He's the founder and the CEO of the Neighborhood Development. Please help me welcome my Tamale. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much and um, good evening everybody. It's a real honor for me to be here and for the Neighborhood Development Center to partner with New American Academy. Um, there's a number of ways that um, um, crossed my mind to uh, sort of celebrate this uh, evening. Um, <clears throat> when Rapa Maka initially introduced me to Asada New American Academy, uh, he said it was out in Eden Prairie, and I had to ask him three times where was Eden Prairie. I had never been in Eden Prairie. I had really no idea how to find it. I knew I would needed a full tank of gas to get there. Uh, <laughs> But I eventually found it, wound around a few times, um, and sure enough, there he was, and there was a whole community of Somali immigrants there. And like all immigrant communities everywhere, and all Somali communities everywhere, there was an awful lot of interest in entrepreneurship. And Assad and Rapa and their efforts at New American Academy had uncovered this um, through all their networks and all their work. And so we uh, began, became, began a partnership, uh, this has got to be uh, two, two and a half years ago now, that has led to um, probably close to 100 people being trained uh, for uh, writing a business plan and uh, getting ready to launch a business. 
Last Wednesday, uh, the Wall Street Journal in New York City had an article about a um, study that was released that day by the Fiscal Policy Institute in New York that documented the fact that immigrants in the United States now constitute uh, close to 50% of all Main Street businesses. If you look out the door of this restaurant when you uh, leave, uh, you're going to see almost nothing but immigrant businesses on this avenue here. And the Somali and East African immigrant entrepreneurs are a huge part of that. In fact, is Sade available to take a bow, the owner of this restaurant? He's walking around with the baseball cap. If you see him, congratulate him. Um, this is a fantastic example of, of an uh, immigrant business and what it does for our community. 20 years ago, I worked uh, with this community, Central Neighborhood, to try to obtain the building that's just out the door to the left here, because at that point it was an adult theater, uh, an extremely negative thing in this community. Uh, and with the help of the U.S. Marshal, actually, we uh, did uh, uh, get ownership of it for the community. Um, at that point, there was literally no immigrant businesses on, uni uh, on uh, Lake Street. Today, there's probably over five or 600 immigrant-owned businesses on this street alone. Same on University Avenue, and you know that's, that's true all over uh, even small towns in Minnesota now. The immigrant... Uh, <coughs> entrepreneurial spirit, the immigrant entrepreneurial talent, whether it's in a restaurant like this or a delivery service like Osman Ali had for uh, bringing Somali food down to the cab drivers at the um, Twin City Airport uh, 15 years ago uh, and everything in between uh, is driving the United States economy higher and higher. It is exposing more and more people uh, to all the new cultures, <coughs> the food, the the entertainment, the, um, the um, entire cultures of all, all of the new uh, immigrant um, communities coming to our city and our, in our country. And it's absolutely to be celebrated and embraced. Moki Hussein is sitting over with me here. She uh, is a former board member of the Neighborhood Development Center and a co-founder of African Development Center. And she happened to spend uh, some years recently uh, in Denmark, and I visited her there because I have uh, my mother's Danish. So I have cousins in the same town she was at, and, and I had a chance to visit the Somali community in uh, that part of Denmark. And I think we all know what's been happening in Europe with immigrant uh, integration, or m more to the point, lack thereof. And I think we all know why getting all the, every immigrant community um, more and more anchored in each country they come to and integrated is absolutely vital to the future of, of our whole world. So I want to thank the entire community for all you bring to our city and our community that you are now a huge part of. And I want to uh, thank and honor um, Assad and the New American Academy for uh, being a, an enormous driver of that out in a place that I now know more or less where it is, Eden Prairie. Thank you. All right, so our next speaker is in the hospital business. She works at the hospitals, and that is one of the most important organizations that I think you can think of when you're fighting for your life. Is that correct? If you're not feeling well, you're not going to a coffee shop or buying anything. You're heading to see your doctor. Our next speaker is Allison Benz. She's the Director of Community Engagement, Western Metro, West Metro for Atlanta Health. Allison currently acts as a liaison between the community and all Atlanta's hospitals outpatient centers located in Hennepin County. Her role includes community benefit reporting, disparate and charitable contributions, engagement, engagement in the public policy work, encouraging employees' volunteerism, and working to improve the health of all people living in the community served by Atlanta Health. Allison Holtz, Master's of Public Health, degree from University of Minnesota, and she has a bachelor's degree 
from St. Olaf College. Please help me welcome Alison Benz. Good evening. Thank you very much for inviting me to be here tonight. It's a thrill to be here. Um, when Assad asked me to speak tonight, he wanted me to talk a little bit about the work that he and I have done together for the last couple of years um, on a project that we have been working on related to health in the Somali community. I've known Assad for almost three years now, and right after we first met, he came to me and he said, Allison, we have a problem in our community. I'm really worried about the health of my neighbors and my friends. He said, we're struggling with health issues such as diabetes and heart disease and chronic diseases. And there are many members of my community that do not feel as healthy living in America than they did in Somalia. Representing the Twin Cities largest healthcare provider, that was kind of hard to hear. Um, because when you think about who you are and you think about this neighborhood with Abbott Northwestern Hospital, literally a few blocks away, we have the bring world-class health care to this neighborhood, it was hard to f hear that people were not feeling healthy in living in America. Um, but Assad was right. He knew it, I knew it, you all know it, and actually Alina Health did know it as well. Um, the term that we often use to describe what we were seeing in our data and what you are experiencing in your community is called health disparities, and it was something that we had been watching in our data and we're concerned about, but we weren't quite sure how to address it. So it came to down to Assad and I having a series of conversations where we started brainstorming, how are we going to make change to this? Um, and coming from healthcare, if you want to make a change you, and you want to talk with doctors and leaders, you need data and you need patient stories. Those are, that's how you get people to make change. So we decided to hold a series of, series of conversations with members of the Somali community. We ended up inviting 68 members of the community into the New American Academy space last winter. Since everyone's talking about weather, I'm gonna talk about it too. Every single community conversation we had happened in a snowstorm, and yet we still got 68 people there. Um, and so we, we invited people in and we asked them, tell us about your experiences. Tell us how your life is different here versus in Somalia. What are you eating? What are you not eating? How are you moving? What are your experiences with healthcare? Um, in these conversations, we heard about sweet tea, we heard about physical activity, we heard about how hard it is to walk in Eden Prairie. You physically cannot walk in Eden Prairie very easily, um, not nearly to the extent that people did when they were living in Somalia. Um, and we also heard a lot about their experiences with American healthcare. Um, these conversations, the folks were gracious, um, they were honest, they shared their opinions, and they really did feel like they were making a difference by sharing their opinions. Um, we also heard a lot about isolation and feelings of, new feelings of safety living in this country, but also concerns about the loss of culture um, for the children and how do, as a population, how do the Somali folks maintain their culture while still um, becoming American. And we also heard a lot about how hard it was to communicate with doctors. We heard about struggles understanding lab tests, and following medication plans. Um, you shared your thoughts and opinions with us and we have been sharing those thoughts with others. The information we gathered from these conversations has turned into many additional conversations, um, both from within the organizations, within healthcare, within public health. Um, we've shared it with government, we've shared it with the park district folks. Everyone who seems to hear this information, it seems like it's new information to them. They feel like it has been helpful, that they are changing the way that they do things within their own organizations, and we really are starting to make some great changes. Um, in terms of the community, one of the first successes I think I can point to is that a couple weeks ago, Assad's youth soccer team took the field at Braemar Field, which is a brand new sports dome in the city of Edina. It had been open three weeks, and his kids were on the field, one of the first groups of kids to be on the field, which is a huge success in my book. Um, the Bloomington Public Schools is now partnering with Bloomington Park and Rec to open up their pools for women-only swimming classes, which is something we heard of from um, the community was necessary. And it did take an outside group to come in and suggest those two partners work together to make it happen. Um, the Three Rivers Park District is looking at how they can turn Bryant Lake Park, which is very close to where many members of the Somali community are living in Eden Prairie, how they can make that park open and accommodating to members of the community. 
because what we heard is that they're just not using it. It literally is right there, but people didn't feel comfortable using it. So we've had discussions with them, and they are on board to figure out how to make it work this coming spring. Um, the re response from Alina has been extremely encouraging from my perspective. Um, my, one of my colleagues and I who worked with Assad on this project have been presenting the information that we collected in our conversations. We've been asked to present it to 10 of our different clinic physicians, um, the clinics with the highest population of Somali patients. We have adopted what are called health equity measures, which we are now looking at the rates of diabetes and colorectal cancer screening in the members of the Somali, our patient population, and trying to bring those rates up to those of the white population, because right now they are considerably lower. I think many of you saw an article that ran in the Star Tribune um, earlier this week about what health equity is, looks like in this, in this state right now, and it's, it's not good. Um, so we are trying to work on that. We also have now have three full-time dedicated Somali translators inside Abbott Northwestern Hospital that are there every day, um, and that is brand new. We're also in the process of planning diabetes education classes in partnership with our diabetes educators to be held in the community, which would be a first time for an organization of our size. We've been talking with leadership at the Mother Baby Center about how to support young women who are becoming mothers, how to help have them have a healthy baby. Um, and we're actually, and one of the things I had heard from the community was, if you really want to make a change in related to health, you need to have more Somali-speaking Somali, people of Somali culture working in healthcare. Um, so we actually next week I have a meeting with our director of recruitment, and we are going to talk about how we go about setting up a program to try to get more Somali-speaking employees into our organization because that is something new. Um, so. That's going to be a longer term goal, but that is definitely something that is going to be on our dashboard. Um, it's long term, but it's an essential one to ensuring that members of this community no longer feel less healthy living here than they did in Somalia. I'll, have to, I'll just end by saying it's been quite a journey the last couple of years going through this project, but I feel like we're literally just at the beginning because we have so many exciting things on the horizon. So I'm hoping to be back here in five years again so we can celebrate all of the successes and hopefully the, our rates of diabetes will be on par with everyone else and there'll be a much healthier population. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alison, for your great presentation and we appreciate your help with the community. Our next speaker is one of our community members, is one of our leaders, and I call it a go-to person. If you have any concerns, any questions, whether it's a policy, leadership, or anyone, anything in between, you'll be going to our next speaker. And I would like each and every one to closely hear what she's gonna share with us today. Please help me welcome Marian Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am not the person that everybody goes. That part is not true. <laughs> I am not. Can you hear me? Uh, well, I just want to thank Assad and his team to invite me to uh, not only come here, but to have a wonderful dinner. And we thank Safari for doing that. Um, I just want to say a few things, and the things I will say probably will, I want the Americans who are, we're all Americans, but the Amer mainstream Americans to hear. I'm a Somali. And I'm a mother. And uh, where we come from, education, is very important. And I give you an example of what, that, what I mean about that. In Somalia, where at the time of my age, not the young generations, we, most of us were nomads. And so the way education was so important that if there are three brothers and one of them is in town, the other two will send their boys or their girls to town so they can go to school. And so that's how I remember education was important. And so what the new academy is doing, the youth leadership, as well as the academic support that they're providing for the Somali community 
is the heart of what the community needs. So I want to thank Assad and his leadership. I congratulate him because that is so important for the community. I also want to share with you, everybody is talking about the weather, so I will talk about the weather too. <laughs> And many of you ask why the Somalis are in Minnesota? Why can't they go to San Diego? We actually moved from San Diego to come to Minnesota. <laughs> and that is the wonderful support and the welcome and the, so the, 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 the level of people who are coming to support us and having our attorney here tonight to really give the community, because this, I think, TV that they're, they're now uh, recording will be seen all over Somalia, to show them how you're not here to, threat, to threaten them or to solicit information from them, but you are here to work with them to make sure that every mother knows that her child will be safe and won't be recruited. That's very important <laughs> for us. And the other thing I will say that it's good to learn a lot of good things about Minnesota. I remember in my days of uh, philanthropy, I attended a dinner celebration of the Lutheran Social Services. And I was expecting they will talk about all their accomplishments. And when they got up, got up, they said, oh, we have to talk about what we will be doing. That's how we celebrate. Uh, our anniversary. So I hope and I know that Assad will celebrate tonight by making sure that he will double or triple the work that he will be doing for the Somali community. So thank you and thank you all for having me. All right. His name is Steve Hanges and he was named as an executive director of the Jewish Community Relations Council of Minnesota and the Dakotas in November 2006. Hodges has a long and impressive association with JCRC. He was on the board of directors from 1993 to 2002 and served as a board president from 1998 to 2000. He also served as a vice president of Minneapolis Jewish Federation from 2004 until 2005 and volunteered with Jewish community, with Jewish family and children's service citizens advocacy project prior to becoming the JCRC's executive director Steve was an attorney with Hanges Stone and other associates since 1996 where he, was, he litigated personal injury, wrongful death, and Federal Employees Liability Act cases. Before that, he was with the Minnesota Office of Attorney General in the Consumer Division, where he litigated consumer protection cases. He organized the Minnesota Elder Consumers Anti-Fraud Campaign with AARP, and the Minnesota Crime Prevention Officers Association. Steve received his bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and his law degree from the University of Minnesota. Please help me welcome Steve. Assad, thank you and congratulations on five spectacular years of community service to your board members, to all your supporters, to everyone here tonight, I deeply appreciate the invitation. It's wonderful to be with you tonight. It's appropriate that we're here on a Friday night. It's, of course, the Muslim Day of Public Prayer, Friday. That's our era Shabbat in Jewish tradition when the Jewish people celebrate their Sabbath. So we have this wonderful confluence of traditions on Friday, and we should all be together on such a happy occasion as the fifth anniversary of New American Academy. I want to say one thing and issue all of us in the Jewish community, in the Somali community, and everyone here together so to this challenge and observation. We are living literally in the one community in the world where there's a significant Jewish 
community and population and a significant Somali community and population. We have a wondrous, unique opportunity to live together as Jews and Muslims and brothers and sisters in advance of the good of the community, working with each other all the time. And everything <laughs> that the New American Academy is doing, and I know working for human dignity is right on your website. Everybody in this room agrees with that proposition. And it's my vow, my pledge, in my position aside, and all of our friends here tonight, that we shall all, Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, everyone in this community shall continue to live together because we are gonna do this unique Minnesota thing, and that is live together in harmony towards advancing the greater good of our community. And to me, that's what the New American Academy represents with all the other wonderful Somali organizations with whom we work and are represented here tonight. It's just this golden opportunity to do the best that we can for our community, for our neighborhoods, for our state, for our nation, for the world. So that is my pledge to you. We have our United States Attorney, Mr. Luger, vowing and advocating for the free expression of religion in this country, an inherent part of our democratic and constitutional rights in the United States. We have our government officials here for whom you petition, absolutely correct, within your constitutional rights to improve our communities. We have organized labor. We have so many great friends here tonight. So thank you. I want to wish everybody in this room all the best, warmest regards from the Jewish Community Relations Council. I look forward to working with all of you, and we should go from strength to strength together. As a state representative, and I have a contact with her when I was in Eganbrary the other day, not long ago. So she doesn't need no introduction, as I said before. Please welcome Seltzer. Help me welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me uh, this evening. I am Yvonne Seltzer, and I do represent Southern Minnetonka, and I am very proud to represent Eden Prairie, which has the third largest Somali-American population in Minnesota, and that is a great honor and a privilege for me. And after I was first elected, one of the first phone calls I got was from Assad, and he said, come over, and please, and I'd love to show you what we're doing at the New American Academy. And I could tell right away what a gem the New American Academy is for Eden Prairie. How much the work that the New American Academy does and has done has helped move Eden Prairie forward as a whole and the wonderful Somali American population in Eden Prairie ahead as particular, in particular. The first thing Assad did was show me how he was meeting the needs, he and his great team, um, who I've enjoyed meeting and getting to know, were meeting the needs of each child that came in that door. They weren't waiting for the institution of the schools to figure out how to do it. They were right in there using their skills, helping these kids become all that they could be. And that wasn't enough for Assad and his his they decided that they needed to tap into the entrepreneurship and the leadership that the Somali American people have. And so now they are holding seminars on leadership and on entrepreneurship. And I was very honored this fall to be at one of the graduations for one of their entrepreneur classes. And I can just tell you, as each entrepreneur stood up and shared their vision and their dream for the future, that. Um, Assad and his group had helped a wonderful group of young leaders emerge, and I know they will only do good things for the Somali people. So I share the vision that I know that uh, Commissioner Callison spoke of for the future of the Somali people in America, for the vision that I know that Jennifer Munt and the, and the uh, Met Council has and every elected official here has uh, for the future of the Somali American people in Minnesota. And I do need to ask for your help as Commissioner Callison did. I am the chief author of the bill that will 
fund that will bond for and fund the state's portion of the Southwest Light Rail, which so many of you have told me are, is vital for your economic future. And so I would ask you to go and to petition all of your state representatives and let them know, and the governor, and let them know how vital this project is. We've made substantial investments in housing, but we need to do more. And again, we need your voice to continue to partner with us and to continue to stress that education is very important to the Somali American people as it is to all Minnesotans and that we need to continue to partner with great organizations like the New American Academy to make sure that each child reaches their full potential. So again, thank you very much for having me here this evening. I want to tell you that Eden Prairie is not so far away. <laughs> And it, it is a nice place to live. And so, uh, um, again, thank you very much. All right, our next speaker is Ross Adams, and is the Executive Director of Alliance for Metropolitan Stability. Please help me welcome Ross. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can promise you I'll be brief. Uh, Assad only gave me the heads up uh, late yesterday that I might speak. Uh, he asked for my bio and I didn't get it to him on time, so I thought I, that would put me off the hook. Um, I just want to say congratulations and salute to Assad and all of the board members of New American Academy. You have built an amazing organization in five years. I'm an executive director of a nonprofit. I know how hard that is. Um, so fantastic work that you've done. I've had the pleasure of working with them uh, regarding the Southwest LRT corridor uh, and helping them to get some community engagement resources with the help of Rapal Maka, who spoke um, more recently. And um, also, I went to a uh, housing meeting that uh, Assad had organized along with Gretchen Nichols, who's with Twin Cities LISC, uh, to discuss the housing situation in Eden Prairie. Uh, I was struck with the, by that meeting. I was struck with the number of folks who turned out, the concern that there had not been any new affordable housing built in 10 years in the city of Eden Prairie, uh, the challenges that the city uh, shared with the residents and some of the community developers uh, that were in the room. But I was the last person to speak at that time, and I'll, I'll say a little bit of what I said uh, that evening, which is, don't ever let them tell you it's impossible. It's not impossible to build affordable housing that can serve the needs of everyone in your community. It's not impossible to get a bonding bill passed so that we can see the Southwest LRT uh, quarter and uh, built. Um, the story of nonprofit experience and the story of America is people being told it's not possible to do that and they persevere and they keep asking and they organize and they persuade public officials and show them that there is a way to do this and we're not going away. Uh, somewhat similar to what uh, Andy Luger did uh, to press the case for the mosque in the city of St. Anthony. So I'm just gonna say keep pushing on these issues. Uh, as Assad knows, he's a board member of my organization. We're a coalition of groups that work on land use and urban growth and development issues. He knows that there is a whole collection of other organizations that want to support the work of New American Academy and help them to improve the economic prospects and opportunities in places like Eden Prairie and throughout the suburbs and in Minneapolis. Um, and we will stand with you when you do that. Thank you. Our next speaker, it will be our own Minnesota auditor. Uh, She's been introduced many times, so I will be very, very brief, and I will call by her name, Rebecca Otto. I think the MC is doing a pretty good job, don't you think? Yes, he is. <laughs> You're great. You're keeping everything moving. So you're doing a great job. And um, I want to give a shout out to U.S. Attorney Andy Luger as well for really the fine work that he does. And even as a state auditor, I went to him with some questions actually for the community because I was trying to get some resources and help. And he's really a great public servant and really is there to do everything he can while he's in that office. And so I'm happy he's there and he's doing what he's doing and he's willing to be a leader. So um, I wanted to thank you for allowing me to attend this dinner. 
I am so excited about this organization. I have been an underdog many, many times in my life where people will say, oh, what you want to do? That's impossible. It can't be done. And every time I said, watch. So what I love about this organization, the New American Academy, is that they're doing really good work and, um, and, and continuing to do that. And I hope I can be supportive of that because we all want our children to be successful. We need all of our children to be healthy and successful and happy and productive citizens. And we want to make sure we take care of our seniors and our elders who need that care. Um, our state is the home to immigrants over many, 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 many years. And you can see it in our food that's available, the community festivals that are available, the clothing sometimes that you can buy, the malls that you can go shop in. And I have to tell you that I feel deeply honored to get to know the East African community. You've been extraordinarily warm to me and welcoming. And I'm learning about your issues, your hopes, your dreams, and hi, Elliot, um, and, and what we all can do together to be stronger as a state. So thank you so much for making our state a very rich place. I hope to continue to work with you as the state auditor. And if there's anything I can ever do, you just call me and I'll pick up my phone and, and help to serve you, all right? And congratulations to the New American Academy and everything that you're doing. Thank you. So our next speaker will be introducing our executive director of New American Academy. Our next speaker is a board member of the New American Academy. He is engineer Abdi Yusuf. Please help me welcome engineer Yusuf. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really grateful and honored to introduce you our next speaker. Um, I think a lot of you had the opportunity to work with him, and I think he, a lot of you know his leadership. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about why and the reason made him to found this foundation. Um, I said back when he moved to Eden Prairie, he went to school over there and uh, he really challenged it and faced a lot of struggle. Um, there were no helpful, the homeworks, all those things. And I said decided um, to go to school because one of the reasons that he kept his mind was since he was doing this struggle that his kids may struggle too. Because we know that there's a research that uh, if the parents then have a degree, at least one of them, for sure their kids will struggle too. And that's why he went to school. As said, he went to uh, Metropolitan State University and uh, he ended his degree as a mathematician. Um, I said he go back to Eden Prairie and uh, find a job at Eden Prairie High School. He taught over there math. And one is he deeply uh, went through his community. He found that his community were facing a lot of challenges, especially because he was interacting with the kids, coming to the school, teaching them the math. And he found that these kids really need a lot of help. And he found that they were facing not only the similars or the challenges that he was facing when he was young, but he, that they need more really help when it comes to math and science. And uh, that was one of the reasons really uh, made him to found this great foundation that we came together. Um, I don't want to say that much because I know Esther will tell us the things that they have been doing so far and the things they've been done success. And I know some of you know that we don't have a lot of time, but I would like to, to keep the time and watch it. So I'm gonna put my cell phone here. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't wanna off the limits. Um, Asad is the founder and the executive of New American Academy. He's also a member of um, Hennepin County Service Board member. He is also a member of Twin Cities Community Land Bank Board member. He is also the co-chair of Community Engagement Steering Committee as a member that advises the Met Council, the Metropolitan. Um, also, as said, he is a member of Twin Cities Equity uh, Communication Group as well as the neighborhood development, what they call NDC board, uh, board member. 
He's also a board member of Alliance for Metropolitan Stability. Um, I would imagine as it is a uh, I think Azar is a great leader because I would tell if you are all these, uh, if you are a board member of all these communities, that means you must be uh, required to speak a lot. And, uh, and I'm hoping you guys will see his leadership. Um, I would like to say one more last. Azar, I don't know if you know most of you, right now he's pursuing his doctorate degree from St. Mary's University. Please join me to welcome our next speaker, I said, Ali, wait. Uh, good evening. First of all, on behalf of New American Academy, uh, its community beneficiaries, board members, uh, youth, adults, partners, I would like to say welcome you. Welcome to our fifth year anniversary. It's a, the time is really, it's going very fast. And I don't have that many things to say because all of my partners and the people that we work with, including uh, government agencies, community developers, number of the organizations, and all those already say what the healthcare uh, agencies, they already say what, what I suppose to say actually. So I don't have that many things to say, but I will share with you just six, seven slides of the work that the New American Academy has been doing for the last five years, and also some of the accomplishments that we had. So, first of all, who we are. New American Academy is a community organization dedicated in, to improving the health, educational attainment, economic empowerment, human welfare, and opportunities for youth, adults, and families of East African Somali immigrant community within the Twin Cities. And what do we do? As Rapa and others say, we started as a small after-school touring program. Uh, I was a teacher at the High. First of all, I would like to uh, welcome a lot of you, uh, especially my, my trainer who, train, who trained me to be a teacher, Dr. Rose Chu, who uh, I remember when I was getting my, uh, my teaching uh, program, I'd been assigned to Eden Prairie Middle School, and I was uh, teaching a geometry class. And Dr. Chu was my advisor, and she came to see how I'm teaching the classroom. So she was sitting in the back of the class, and she's taking a lot of notes. <laughs> when I finished the class, she said, Asad, you've been looking just one side of the class. You haven't looked that side. <laughs> <laughs> you've been calling few individuals who raised their hand. You didn't look the, uh, the, uh, the gender-wise, boys and girls. So you're always speaking the boys. <laughs> and the other thing that I still recall was, uh, Dr. Chu said, you use the word okay about 40 times within 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to welcome you. And Dr. Chu was also the Assistant Commissioner of Department of Education. Now she's the Interim Dean of uh, Department of Education, Metropolitan State University. And I would like to uh, Youth Prize Foundation present and, and Marcus Bob and Walkie and say thank you very much for sponsoring this event and also for a, being a great, great supporter of New American Academy. Not only our organization, but a lot of uh, underrepresented youth in the Twin Cities. I really appreciate for that help. So we do business training and consulting, and we, we, we don't have the capacity to do this without NDC, Neighborhood Development Center. Uh, Mike Tamali, uh, who some of us call Mike the Somali, <laughs> I would like to say thank you very much for giving us uh, this ticket. Actually, NDC was the first organization who brought the idea of a free RIPA loan, which means interest-free loan. Because of our culture, the Islamic culture, you cannot accept or give uh, interest. Uh, so he bring an idea which was a very attractive to our community. So. And community engagement and outreach that we've been doing with the Southwest Light Rail project, and 
the Hennepin County, uh, Jen Carlson, who's our commissioner, as well as the chair of the Hennepin County uh, Board of Commissioners and Metropolitan Council and all those government agencies. We've been working together on health advocacy that we had together with uh, Alina. And we just had a finish a project, which we call Project A, uh, studying about why the diabetes is so epidemic to our community. So I would like to say to you, thank you. All these programs, we have partners, because when we started this organization, we didn't have capacity to really do what we, are supposed to, what we have been doing. We don't have uh, the financial or the technical skills to do what we're supposed to do. So we look partnership. That's how we've been existed and we've been reached this far here. So who we serve? The New American Academy works with the Somali families and youth through its programs and services. So youth development programs that we have, we developed a social support network resource connection to affirm you this cultural identity. Uh, and support them in their development, enhancing relationships between youth and their parents, improving academic performance via homework assistance and student parent advocacy, and enhancing access and opportunities for regional and outlet and career exploration. This year, actually last year, 2014, New American Academy changed its model of after school touring like one to one. We change, we look in another way because leadership is part of of when kids know what they're supposed to do in the schools, they will be able to do the, for their homeworks by themselves. But we change the model to teach them how they can be a role model for their community, how they can stay away from trouble, how they can be, uh, how they can have a good relationship with others, how they can be, be advocate for themselves and for their community. That way we build their capacity to do something good for themselves in terms of, uh, of education and social and all that. So this is our uh, youth programs at the New American Academy. Entrepreneurship, NDC, Neighborhood Development Center and New American Academy, we partner with a very authentic, culturally appropriate training. Uh, Entrepreneurs will have the capacity and necessary skills to start businesses and contribute to, the, to their families' well-being by participating in training sessions. New American Academy partnered with this with Neighborhood Development Center for technical and access to the loans. One of our sponsors uh, tonight, uh, he graduated from our classes. And he had more than 50 people who are working for him. That's, I think, a success story of this entrepreneurship class. Uh, Health Care Awareness, Alison, talks about our partnership. We have a group of elders who are sitting there also talking about the, the kind of needs they have, physical activities, uh, health care uh, problems in terms of diabetic, uh, chronic diseases such as uh, hypertension and all that kind of stuff. This is a focus group and a study that we had with Blue Cross Blue Shield and through Alina. I would like to also mention... Uh, Housing is a big problem in our community. Uh, the city of Eden Prairie and some of the, not only Eden Prairie, but the suburb cities don't really like to build affordable housing or mixed income working class kind of housing. So the light rail system brings opportunities in terms of jobs, economic development and housing for historically underrepresented low income communities in that area. So we, we partner with uh, community development initiative through LISC, uh, Gretchen Nichols, who we really ad admire her work to our community because this project of CDI give us an opportunity and the, and the platform where we can sit with the city, where we can partner with the county, Met Council, uh, PPL, other developers to the Islam Bank. And right now, this is a focus group that we had and City of Eden Prairie, they joined with us to study the town center station, one of the light rail future station town center, which is close to the, very close to Eden Prairie Mall. How we'll have a business development and jobs and housing in that area. And just about a month ago, we bring together a, a panel 
including uh, the county, including uh, the state of Minnesota, Minnesota Housing Finance Agency, uh, including uh, uh, the city itself, including uh, PPL, Land Bank, uh, all those kind of developers to study how we can move forward, how we can convince city to push all those kind of affordable housing. And the Met Council is one of our great supporters of this. And I would like to also say thank you, uh, Jennifer Munt, who is really a someone who that night, I, I know Met Council has a big other issues. She's supposed to say, come to us and she's always support with us about this. So right now we have, our community have a support from, from other partners and I think the city council members will change their mind and do some kind of zoning, uh, changing zoning to develop this kind of housing. Uh, we have a authentic community engagement. We bring together the city council members, Met Council, community members to come together and talk about the issues and challenges and opportunities that we have. Uh, I would like to share with you one story. When, when we have this problem in the beginning, back in 2005, a group of Somali leaders, uh, including Ahmad Jama and me and others, talk about how we'll be able to sustain our community in Eden Prairie, how we'll be able to stay in this community, in this city, in these schools, in these neighborhoods. The only thing we can do that is to make sure our community have partners, people that can work with us. To have partners, you have to reach out other bigger organizations, uh, people who have more capacity and power and advocacy than us. I think because of this, our issue become really a national. I just gave an interview to Brooklyn, Brooklyn institutions last week, which they're going to publish their, uh, their findings of housing and jobs and economic development, not only in Prairie, but the entire Southwest area, and how those challenges will be, should be overcome. And I would like to, I don't want to talk more about uh, you know, what we are doing, but I would like to just share with you two things that we have achieved so far. We trained more than 100 uh, community members. Uh, about six or seven of them already opened their businesses. That's a really good, st good success story. And <laughs> we have this kind of housing and jobs talk because of the light rail and because of the county and Met Council and other community partners. That's another good story. Uh, we have the city of Eden Prairie who are willing and, and, and trying to do something because you know, the status quo cannot be all the time like that way. Uh, we have our youth members who graduated in a very high degree went to North Dakota, went to uh, uh, engineering like uh, petroleum engineering, which is a very good also uh, success stories. Uh, so the, all those kind of work comes in a very small steps. It just adds up like one plus one equal two. But I think what we have done so far is a small things that we are adding together and our supporters and people who are helping us uh, to open our doors to this immigrants and underrepresented free and reduced lunch kids. Really, those are the people who make all these kind of success stories. And I would like to say thank you very much. And you are welcome. And I really appreciate you for your time this Friday, Friday night, which is supposed to stay with your families, but you are coming with us because of the care and the kindness that you give to us. So thank you. I hope y'all still awake. <laughs> if you haven't slept yet, we'll get you some coffee. But I'm, I'm about to finish very soon, so be patient with me. And I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, this event is one of the most, the most organized event that I can think of my entire life. So I encourage you tonight, 
before you walk out of that door, think about one thing. What can I do for somebody else that need me? And I have learned a great lesson from philosophers that always tell you, do something for someone that you don't know. Help someone, give $5 to a child that lives the other side of this great country. They don't know you, but they get $5. And those are the legacy. When you die, what have you left behind? What have you left behind? Is a building institution, helping an organization, doing something tangible. Otherwise, you become worthless. Why are we remember Steve Jobs? Because if we have him here, iPads, iPhones, laptops, mics, right? So you have to do something. So I would like to welcome Muhammad Ismail. He's our great leader in the Somali community. Please help me welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Bismillah um, rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the merciful and compassionate. Um, it's a great honor for me to be here tonight. Um, I don't know the words I can describe for the new American Academy because everything has been um, talked about. Um, when I see um, five years ago, when I said he was um, founding this organization, and today where he's at is a different. I see, you know, um, things um, came together, and he has done a lot of work. And all the time I was advising him, and I was encouraging him, and I'm proud of him what he has achieved for the few years. And also I want to thank um, um, U.S. Attorney. I want to um, thank because um, the job he has done about the civil rights. And I want to um, thank you know the partnership on who helped a new um, American Academy. And also, um, tonight he presented us um, what he has done. Not only him, others talk about. I was part of the research when Elson was talking about. I was part of the research. And I volunteered after the school program. And I was there when he was talking about the light rail and metro uh, transit. And um, what a wonderful um, years um, and New American Academy. And I um, thank um, my friend, my dear friend, um, Asad. And um, because the reason I'm doing that, not only he's my friend, because this guy, he went to uh, an education school. We worked together in Eden Prairie. I was teacher. Uh, for special assignment for five years. And then he went on uh, an uh, MBA. He could pursue a uh, better job. And he would be in the big glasses like Best Buy and other companies. Um, but he didn't do that. And um, he went to nonprofit. Look at the name, nonprofit. You are not making money. But he changed it, uh, the children's life. He changed it, the elderly, that they can have, they can leave this country. They can deal with um, the chronic diseases they have, and hypertension and diabetes. You know, he's the guy, sit down with them in a round table and tell them, you know, if you have diabetes, uh, don't use sugar. If you have hypertension, you need 2300 milligram sodium intake. 
So they learn. Before, you know, whenever they come, you know, uh, their high blood pressure was high. You know, out of the border, like 200, uh, the, the top number, and the bottom number, 110, because they were using sodium. And I, 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 I appreciate you. And I said, uh, my name is, is Ibrahim Mohammed. I'm the chairman of the Shakabi Diversity Alliance. Uh, we are partner with the Assad. I live in Shakabi. Also, I'm a school liaison. And I work for the uh, Somali students and the families. Uh, thank you very much, Assad, what you have done. And ladies and gentlemen, I will conclude my speech for each and every one of you. Anybody who's sitting next to you, shake their hands, get to know them. If there's ways to exchange cards, that's the way we call it networking. Get to know each other, stand on your feet, and I thank you, and God bless you.